Gotta Gossip, a crazy podcast about DC, with your host E-Rock and PD. When we speak up, get your geeks up, cause you know you about to get geeked up. So sit back, relax, and get comfy. Lose your mind like Solomon Grundy, and listen to a show that won't be forgotten. Coming straight out of Gossip. It's been a while. Welcome to another episode of Straight Outta Gotham, episode 135. We are a fan of pop culture podcast and a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network, hosted by BatmanOnFilm.com. To make sure you check out all the other great shows associated with us and that network, head on over to BOF, click that podcast drop down, and see what everyone has to offer. Uh, you know, if you really want to listen to the Batman Book Club again, you can. I mean, you've all listened to it already. I don't know what you're listening to, but, you know, lower power. Anyway. I am your co-host from the other side of the Hudson River, senior contributor to Batman on Film. I am Peter R. Vera. Today we're recording on December 5th, 2023. And we, as always, we have a great show for you today. But before I get into the good stuff, I'd like to remind you, all our faithful listeners, that if you take the time to rate and review our show, Straight Outta Gotham on Apple Podcasts, and we read your review on air, you won our monthly prize pack. So please be in it to win it. Get, it, get those reviews in. And now let me introduce my partner in crime, the offensive coordinator in waiting of the New York Jets a hometown boy, a local legend, the champion of Long Island, Eric Holzman. Oh, that's a dream job. Are you kidding me? I would... Well, I'm very sure you could do a much better job than me. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, I have some plays I could pull out from my, my old playing days that I'm sure would work and score, score a few touchdowns, uh, which this team can't seem to do no matter who's playing. So it doesn't I, even matter. I was listening to sports radio uh, the other day and people were calling in and talking about adam gase that's how bad it's gotten they're they're bringing back memories of adam Dude, gase and the functional offense he had <laughs> it's literally a repeat it's, it's funny it's just as it might even be worse like this is unbelievable i can't well, they put up the stats the stats are worse <laughs> they're way worse than gase it's, un- it's so bad especially in the red zone it was funny so they don't even get there. What do you mean in the red zone? Well, that's, that's, well, they're also, when they also when they get there, they scored a twenty percent clip. I was like, wow, these stats are really bad. I mean, Gase oh, wasn't great; God. he was in like the thirties. But this team is in the twenties. I was like, this is drastically worse. <laughs> it's worse and worse. It's yeah. I mean, it's bad play calling. They haven't obviously the quarterback play hasn't been good. But it, to me, it's more the play calling and. I just, think that's obviously that's the biggest problem. And uh, I'm I'm no scientist, but. Man, I, I've said this like a few shows ago. Where are all the old school like backup quarterbacks? Like, you know, like the Mark Brunells of the world or the Steve Burlines, like those guys. You remember I those know. guys? Like, I don't know where they are. There are no backup quarterbacks at all in the NFL. <laughs> it's true. There are. I mean, last night, again, in that game, we had um, we wound up getting two of them playing. Uh, Jake Browning played for the Bengals because Joe Burrow's out for the season. And Jake mm-hmm. Browning played. He actually he had a fantastic game. Yeah, but. Um, Trevor Lawrence got hurt during the game, towards the end of the game, and C.J. Beathard came in and finished. So, is Lawrence done? No, they're not. I haven't heard yet. They said it was just a sprain. I haven't heard what the if they found anything else for okay. their testing. But Interesting. it's crazy how many quarterbacks have gone down this year. It's really a crazy, crazy. Uh, and again, it's a violent sport, so it's always possible. I mean, it's always that's. Yeah, I just, I just don't think there's there. They don't have good enough players. Well, it's hard to with the salary cap. I guess it's hard to sign a premium backup because you know they kind of want to get close to paid close not to what a starter makes, but you know with their with um to their experience or to their actual value. So teams mm-hmm. have to teams have to decide where they want to you know cut costs. And if you're spending all this money in your starter, you're not going to spend a lot for a backup. So that's it. There you go, GM Holzman. That's it. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see though how. Uh, how the seasons that this season plays out with so many starters. I think I read something in the AFC, only three of the starting quarterbacks who started this year are still playing. And it was Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. That's gotta be Jalen, right? And I forget. No, no. And the AFC. Oh, Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and maybe Russell, Herbert? maybe Bobby. Her- I mean, Bobby. look, I'm saying Bobby a bear, uh, Justin Herbert. Maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Interesting. I think that was it. So yeah, it's crazy. It's been a crazy, crazy season. That Herbert guy. I mean, I don't watch much football, but I, I always, I feel like he's a bit overrated, and I don't watch any football. Yeah, the Chargers are just the Chargers. Go Chargers, go. 
<laughs> their 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 coach is terrible too. That's another thing that's really bad in the league. This is not a football show. We'll get off this topic very quickly. Is, but what would your football show be like? I don't know. Uh, this all, all flew up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Wings up, wings oh. up. <laughs> Landing gear. I want to turbulence. Turbulence. <laughs> turbulence. <laughs> the Jets podcast. <laughs> 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 we'll, just, we'll just call it turbulence. That would turbulence be turbulence and jets podcast. Oh, yeah, man. But that, that, that sounds Justin, get the logo ready. That sounds <laughs> fabulous. I like that actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, seriously, I could just have on fans from throughout the years, and that would be just <laughs> the show. Just have random fans be on the show. The clips from airplane that don't make sense. Airplane, basically, airplane out of context. The New York Jets. <laughs> that would be perfect. Oh, God. We're brainstorming here, guys. Pete's giving me ideas. Now we're going to have to see if this happens. But, uh, yeah, it's been a rough uh, football season for this area. I mean, the Giants aren't good either. So it's been a really tough football um, season, a professional football season for the, the area. How, at how least you in South Jersey. <laughs> yeah, that's true. South Jersey or northern New York, I guess. <laughs> Those two teams are, are, doing, are playing well. But, uh yeah, the, the in the tri-state area around here, we're not we're not good. But it's been like that for a while now, so who cares? That's, yeah, <laughs> that's better than being a Vikings fan. That's where I'm at. Oh, oh, see, I didn't say that. By the way, that was Pete. That was not me. I did not say that. <laughs> I oh, but you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> but uh, remember when Kirk Cousins was coming to the Jets? Yeah. Twice. <laughs> that was twice. That was a possibility twice. Oh man, that that had so interesting. That lasted so interesting. a long time. I know. Well, we're not the only things that are. That we're not the only team to the only thing going on that's having turbulence, so to speak. So let's get into it. News. News. <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah, so. Let's start off here because this is a franchise both you and I really, really like, and uh, we like the the reboot of it. And now it looks like that's going to be even different in the third film. And I'm talking about Scream, of course. Uh, We got word a couple weeks ago that Melissa Barrera was fired for comments that she had made regarding the war in the Palestinian um, Israeli war. Um, We got word that she had been fired. Uh, Then we get word that Jenna Ortega, um, due to scheduling conflicts, is no longer going to be playing um, Sam and what's her name again? I forget the sister's name. I know Samantha was the older one. I just blanked myself. Carpenter. Yeah. Um, Anyway, she's not going to be there either. uh, Or she won't be um, in the movie either. So now the franchise is kind of like in limbo. Uh, limbo is best the best term that i could think of because one like you said the new stars uh have essentially fired and quit Mm -hmm. and the old stars are fighting for every penny that she's worth yes and you've got to come up with something because you know you made two successful movies you know it's just they were going by it seems like a film by film basis for the new trilogy yeah Um, they they never signed on for a trilogy they're going one by one so it, I, I, it's an interesting predicament. Um, I'm honestly kind of hoping this just paves the way for the queen to return. That's really where I'm at with this. Yeah. Her name's Tara, by the way. That's Jenna Ortega's character is Tara. Thank you. Um, yeah. But um, yes, I'm kind of hoping that too. Uh, they don't have to worry about paying those two down. So I guess they can give Nev her money. <laughs> I'm also happy there's no more force ghosts and scream. Like I was tired of that. <laughs> <laughs> the Billy Loomis ghost situation or mental thing was not my f- I have no problem with Sam being a descendant of Billy that was fine but right. Billy popping up was, was awkward for me so I'm glad that that has come to an end <laughs> right so Spyglass Media is the company that's producing or um, financing the these Scream films which I had I didn't even know to be honest um, until this happened. I mean, I know it's in the beginning of the film. They tell you who it is and whatever, but I'd never paid attention to it. So apparently not only are they, apparently they're pretty cheap. 
Um, let's put it out there that way. But they did release a statement when this happened, and they said, Spy ga- Spyglass's stance is unequivocally clear. We have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism or the incitement of hate in any form, including false references to genocide, ethnic cleansing, Holocaust distortion, or anything that frequently crosses the line into hate speech. Um, of course, that's referring to Barrera's comments. I never read her comments. I don't know if you did, but I never did. Um, a lot of people say there's a lot of people going back and forth on who's actually right on this. I don't know because I haven't read the comments, but right. I was like, yeah, I, you know, as a movie star, you've got to be careful. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, I don't ever agree with censoring people. You should be able to say what you want to say. Um, there, but on the other hand, there's always consequences to what you decide to say. So clearly that's the case here. Whether yeah. you agree with what she said or didn't say, she said it and the company doesn't agree with her being able, with what she said. So she got fired. Um, I think she's, I think she's a talented actress. I, I am kind of upset. I did like the character and where they were going with it. I thought she was great. Yeah. So, and both of them. So I don't know what they're going to do now. There've been rumors about what they're going to do in the, in the new one um how they're gonna move forward i thought they would just build around the twins um they could do that right do something of of that nature what would but do you have any like you said you maybe bring nev back now and kind of uh do a film around those three yeah because like to be to be honest from my perspective this is just me as a scream fan i really like scream four so her her kind of being cut down in Scream Five a little bit was a bit of a bummer, and then her not being in Six at all right. sucked, you know. So like I was enjoying the return of Nev Campbell, and let's outside of Friday the Thirteenth, like these final girls are the reasons we watch these movies. Yes, right. Like you know, you for every Halloween, for every Michael Myers fan, there's just as many Laurie Strode fans. Right. Yeah. I know there's like a certain segment of the movies where she's not in them, but you know, let's be honest, Lori is Michael's adversary and so forth. Um, you know, even Freddy Krueger and Nancy, like, you know, even Nancy came back for an extra movie or whatever, Heather Langenkamp. So, you know, like these final girls are a part of the movie and ne- and Sydney Prescott is, you know, a part of she's a big part of Scream. Like everything revolves around Sydney and her mom and decisions made and you know right. it's it, it's kind of all about her story. So it was cool to pivot for two films away and see the Billy Loomis side of things. I don't mind that. I think it was cool. I, I enjoyed it. I liked the, I liked those two movies a lot, except for the ending in six. But, uh, you know, maybe this is what the Scream franchise does. Maybe it pivots, like you said, to rant. Maybe that's what it does. It goes from Sydney to Billy to Randy. And then right. it, it, at some point we'll get to the, the Dewey part of it. Uh, I don't know, or the uh, the Gale, but um, maybe that's an interesting turn they take. But I'm I'm hoping Nev comes back. I, I missed her in the last movie. Yeah, I did. I don't I know think... where she would have fit in the last movie because there's there were apparently two scripts, like one with and without. But right. I missed her. Yeah, no, obviously. I mean, she's she's the heroine who started the whole thing. So you know, she's she's the key character in all of the, had been the key character in all of the like films. Lois, she's the key. Yeah, like Lois, she's the key. See, it always goes back to BVS, guys. No matter what it is, we can always bring BVS into <laughs> into the conversation. Well, yeah, you're right. Hero. She was missed. They mention her because Gail says, like, I, I called Sydney. She's not coming. She went move whatever. She went away or she she hiding somewhere. I don't remember what she said, but it was something like that. Uh, so she was, her essence was there in a way, but it, obviously she wasn't. So... I would be fine with that. If if she's okay with doing it and they can agree to some kind of story where she gets brought back in, that'd be fine. I swear though, do not make her ghost face. I would not like that. That would not be a good. I can't imagine them even considering that. Yeah. That's the one thing I would be like, Oh, if they do that, I wouldn't like that at all, but who knows what's going to happen now? We don't know. We just know that it's still going to be made. That's all we know. They're still on track to make a screen film. <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I, you know what a little bit of a break isn't a bad thing right let's be honest you know we've been saying this about the dc universe maybe uh instead of rushing out to get the next thing out there why don't we just pump the brakes a little bit i agree sometimes it's good make people want it make people anticipate it this way it's not overplayed and overdone and just constantly throwing in your face you know you got to right. kind of want things sometimes yeah so i mean you guys out there who are also horror fans fans of the the scream franchise let us know what you think because 
Uh, let us know what your ideas are. Like, what do you think they should do? Where do you think they should go? Let us know in the comments when I post the show on the Facebook page. And we if Eric up. was in Scream, do you think he would get killed in the first, <laughs> second, or third act? Let us know. Thanks. <laughs> both of us. Both of us. Let's do that. Let, let's say if both of us were I'm in Scream. I'm not dying. You want to know why? Because I'm getting the first plane, cab, train, bus out of town. I'm not even gonna, like, are you kidding me? If I lived in, I would never live in Woodsboro. I would have <laughs> left after the Loomis massacre. I would have left the town. It would be a ghost town, you figure? Literally? Yeah. Like, I don't live in Hillside, <laughs> New Jersey, because the Watcher lives there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I don't. There you go. The hero, the wanting to be a hero in me would want to stay and try and help, but... And that's why you'll die in the first act. <laughs> probably. probably. Be the first one dead. Uh, anyway, moving right along. Uh, we did get some good news. Pete, news I know Pete was waiting for. Uh, so let's just get to that one right away. We have two... We had two new castings recently in Superman Legacy. One was Lex Luthor, who will be played by Nicholas Holt. And then the other one is, of course, Jimmy Olsen, uh, who was unceremoniously killed early in BVS. We didn't actually even know it until the director's cut. Yeah, we didn't. Or if you if you watch the credits and you saw the name, I guess. But who but does you had that? No idea who that actor was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So sorry. Two other casting. There, um, Skylar Gisondo is playing Jimmy Olsen, and then Sarah Sampaio is playing Eve Tessmacher. So. What did you think of all these castings? Because you had been kind of like, finally, I finally. want Superman yeah, characters cast. So yeah, like it, it took forever. Like I, I know this happened. It's just I, I was, I'm at least feeling a little bit better about the movie now that there's okay. actual Superman characters in it. it. It's just reassuring, you know. It's like, uh, it's like Tommy Boy when he's like trying to put the guarantee on the box, and he talks to the old guy in the beginning, and it's like it makes you feel good. There's a guarantee on the box. Like you just feel nice about it, you know. Like oh, right. Lex Luthor. I, I know we've been complaining about Lex Luthor in every Superman movie, but it's. It's like, oh man, Mister, uh, which like it's like we need to fill a smart guy role. Okay, we'll use Mister Terrific instead of Lex Luthor. You're like, oh, this is not what I want. But right. um, I'm just happy that it's reflecting Superman ish. Like I'm still, I still have concerns, you know, because there's a bunch of other characters in it. Because and I don't really know what the movie's about. Right. But um, that and no one's been able to get a super. It seems like no one's been able to get a Superman movie right in 30 years. So like, obviously, I have concerns, but uh, I'm feeling a little more positive about it. I like the test markers in it. It's. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it you know it's it's cool i enjoyed seeing her pop up on the cw at one point so like it's just you know it's just nice to pay uh, homage to uh, the old school stuff yeah um i was happy to hear it too to be honest i was kind of wondering when they were going to name these characters uh i wasn't sure if lex was going to be in it even Ooh. um but the fact that he is and the fact that it's holt who is a fantastic actor uh, they did they did the character justice by casting somebody who I think can do the role well. A lot of people thought he was going to be Superman, remember? So He's been up for like every major superhero <laughs> role for DC, it seems like, for a while now. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. It's very cool that they cast him. I don't know much about um, Skylar Gisondo. I know he... He just um, looks nerdy as hell. He does look, yes. The look is very much what you would assume from Jimmy Olsen. Um, he's, he was in The Righteous Gemstones on HBO. I didn't watch it. I don't know uh what what his work is like and the other the other actress is a model uh who apparently has been in victoria's secret ads so i'll, I don't, go, I'll go look up her work yeah <laughs> so yeah so she obviously i'm assuming she's she's easy on the eyes i don't know who she is but i'm assuming she's easy on the eyes so uh it's just good that they're rounding out like you said with superman characters I, i'm kind of happy about that as well Let's get the meat. We're being told that's the meat of the story, that it's a Superman movie. He keeps oh, saying that and just it makes you really, oh, man. Yeah. Strikes suck. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. We could have had this news probably months ago if uh, if everyone agreed to terms a long time ago. Yeah, it does. It is kind of weird that they announced he announced the other characters before the strike and got them through. And then these came after. But yeah, it's like trade deadline deals. Three yeah. o'clock Eastern. Yeah, I don't I don't know how it happened. But I'm glad it did. So I think that's good. This movie seems to be rounding into shape. It so. makes me wonder, was this news just like hanging in like limbo? Because it's like, well, the strike's happening. We can't announce this yet. This came in at 3.01. The strike happened at 3. You know, like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, just I don't curious. even know. That's a good question. It's I don't just even know. a funny little thing I'm curious about. I don't know how that works. 
That's a really good question. Uh, anyone out there knows, let us know. <laughs> like, and there's no leaks during strikes. No one's leaking. I'm like, oh, well, it's nice to know you guys decided you, you won't do that then. <laughs> it's the only time we don't leak is during the strike. Like, all right. Okay. All right. Yeah. And just another thing, this is a more recent story and it wasn't on the, it wasn't on our rundown for this show, but I'm just going to put it out there anyway, because we've been, we discussed it today on the on the fan page. So you're the, going to the Madam Web premiere. No, no, no. I wish. I wish. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Okay. The James Gunn talked about uh, Brave and the Bold, how there's no casting, nothing yet, right. um, nothing there yet. And he said a rule of thumb is that they don't cast without scripts if they don't have a script. So guys so what's Muccietti doing so well yeah that's one thing you're asking but just relax like let this stuff play out don't you're, you're asking twitter to relax <laughs> or whatever threads i know they didn't ask him this on vero yeah it wasn't there so um but he has we haven't even start this movie hasn't even I, superman I'm legacy hasn't even just, started filming just wait just go rewatch a movie you like <laughs> <laughs> You know, you've got plenty of them. <laughs> it's true. Like, I agree with you. Yeah, like let's get super. Let's get Superman Legacy at least starting filming to see. And we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get leaks about it. I'm sure we're gonna get leaks about what's going on on set. We do now all the time. I don't care to see them, but you know it's gonna happen. So yeah, people should be putting all their time and effort right now into finding the Spider-Man No Way Home movie figures that just came out. Like that's something you all should be doing. Like go hunting for action figures, not bothering James Gunn on Twitter <laughs> about this stuff. Like if you want to do other fanboy stuff, that's a great thing to do right now. Yeah, I can't find uh, Andrew or, or Holland anywhere. <laughs> Pete, Pete, Pete is putting out a, a signal to you guys right now that if you find these toys, let him know. He wants to know. He wants to know where they are. Oh, just, just do something else. Just find a better way to occupy your time. Don't bo- don't bother James Gunn with ridiculousness. Yes. Bother Eric with ridiculousness. That's fine. I bother other people with ridiculousness. We all the should, time, who so. would be down for a cameo Eric Holzman edition? Nobody. Would you pay fifty cents for a special birthday message from the family <laughs> in Long Island? Let us know in the comments below. That's all I would get is exactly is 50 cents. Well, I, I tried to make it cheap enough for that. Like, at least people would do it as a gag. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, I was oh. wasting a dollar on Holzman. Eric, wish my great. grandmother a happy birthday. <laughs> like, uh, Nana Gertie, it's Eric Holzman. Just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I'm the champion of Long Island. Thanks for being a fan. That would and I be... hope you have lots of cake. <laughs> You might be onto something, Pete. We could just have random, regular people do cameos. For other people. <laughs> that might be that might be something to kind of imagine giving your uncle a cameo from Eric Holder. Like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> hey, Uncle Steve, just wanted to say congratulations on oh. your electrician certificate, and you know all that hard work, and you know anytime you need to plug in a light bulb, you can come to my house. Do you remember when we? Do you remember when we did a cameo for Rick from Tommy Lauren? Do you remember that? Me, I did. I, yeah, I did. It was great. It was great. She's a big Cowboys fan, just like uh, yes, shoe. Yes, I remember. I remember that well. That was funny. That's a good one. <laughs> Some of these cameos are really expensive. Like I, I, I looked up like Aaron Boone's, and he was charging like three hundred dollars. I'm like, no one wants your cameo. Well, like Don, like Don LaGreca <laughs> has one, and. Peter Rosenberg has one, like all these uh, radio I, I, hosts them have them now. And... Priced. I'm like, what are you? I know. Why, why are you so expensive? I know. I know. So, all right. Well, your favorite director has a movie coming out. In case you didn't know, the of Russos. Course. No, no, no. I'm talking about the the man, the the myth, the no. legend, Zack Snyder. Of course. Zack Snyder. Yes. Uh, we know that Rebel Moon is coming out um, in a couple of weeks now, actually, I believe. So he recently spoke to THR and he spoke specifically. I'm not going to go into the entire article about. No, no, Rebel no. You need to talk about Zack in detail. Because, yeah, because I really <laughs> don't care about Rebel Moon. and <laughs> so Dude, I hear it's bigger than Star Wars. Oh, uh, yeah. OK, that'll be the day. That'll be the day. There's only one thing in history that's been bigger than Star Wars, and that's the MCU. Nothing B- has come close. BVS. <laughs> On its own, BVS. So, but he specifically spoke about if he would return 
to DC. And he said no, pretty much. So he's not coming back, guys. <laughs> uh, he's I, I read it. It was funny. He said he would do come back for the Dark Knight Returns. I was like, didn't you do that already? <laughs> well, yeah, like I just thought it was funny. I, I just think it's funny he thinks he's like, I'll consider coming back if they let me do this. And it's like no, nah, dude, your your time has come and gone. <laughs> and yeah, dude, you're the reason why they had to reboot all this crap to begin with. So you're not you don't you don't have a chance to you know, you don't have the the cachet to even try and make these demands. Like, shut up. I don't want to hear you anymore. Um, you know, whatever. And he obviously plugged his zaddies. So he gave them a lot of credit, which he probably should, in, in all honesty. Like they did harass people to get that movie made, so good on them. Yeah, uh, that's the other part that I kind of um, wanted to touch on. He once again passed the buck when asked about that, the Snyder Cut movement and the people involved in it. He kind of passed the buck again and said he can't, like, I couldn't really control what they do. And, he um, controlled everything. <laughs> he manipulated yeah. the hell out of them. Right. It's just funny thinking about it, but, you know, whatever. I was on either side. I didn't care. I know people would say, well, you're Batman on film, so you hate it. And I was like, that's, I just, I... I didn't care <laughs> after 17 didn't work and no one cared about any of this. I was like, yeah, let's just, I've been all about the full reboot for a while now. You know, just right. that's, that's the way the game went and uh, you know, everyone rejected it. So what do you want me to do? Yep. I liked it. It was fine. I enjoyed BBS. You know, I, I talk about it with Eric all the time. We joke about the movie, but like, I, I still enjoy it, but yeah, I've been and ready to move on for a long time. And Matt Reeves, Batman's here and, that's it. It's Pattinson, not Batfleck. I've made the transition, and we just talked about Brave and the Bold. That's another Batman coming. We yeah. did, Keaton came and Keaton just came back and went. So, like, I don't know. I've been very occupied and very happy with what I've gotten. I know a lot of people aren't generally, and that's why they're doing what they're doing. But whatever, you know, I'm just going with the flow. Yeah, I mean, it. The article is. It's a good article in a sense that he clearly has moved on. Like that's how I read it in a lot of ways. Uh, he doesn't. He they talk specifically about release of Snyder Cut and everything that was involved in it, and mm -hmm. um, he does go through all that. He, like I said, he he mentions the the movement itself, uh, and what exactly happened and how the movement doesn't matter what happened. They got the movie made, and he's right. And you know, it's out there now for everyone to decide whether that was a smart idea or not. The movie exists, and I, we have friends who like it. I think you even like it. Um, yeah, I think it's a good movie. I think it's it. I, I'm I'm on record for saying they should have just, if they were going to fire the guy, they should have just let him make his movie and then, and then parted ways. I think the way they did it was wrong, but right, you know, just at the, at the same time, it's you know, right. I still haven't watched The Irishman. He, d <laughs> it's just yeah. long. It's long. It's my only gripe. It's freaking long. It is. It's a long movie. Uh, but he he does say the last quote of the article he says is in the end when talking about the DC years it could not have gone any other way. So it's nice to know he likes chaos. <laughs> yeah, like it couldn't have gone any other way. <laughs> if I'm a studio um, head, I'm like not working with that guy. <laughs> if that's the way he does business. <laughs> that is too much drama for me, pal. No, thank you. Right. Um, it's crazy. But it's it's very it does I don't Rebel Moon to me looks like a it to me it doesn't look like a mo like a major motion picture style movie and it's not it's going to be on Netflix. I don't know if they're going to have a theatrical release period for it. Uh, I'm sure it'll be like select theaters. So yeah. it does stuff like that. Right. So that's what was Army of the Dead was that. Um it was out in the theaters I think for a couple of weeks and then it came out it went on Netflix. So I think things are be different now. That was more of a pandemic movie. Yeah. I'm just, I don't know how it's going to do. I don't, I don't want to see, I don't wish it to fail. I don't do that with people. I don't want the movie to fail. It doesn't look like something. I do like science fiction. To me, this looks like something, a, a, a hodgepodge of a bunch of different sci-fi films. You know what it actually reminds me of? So uh, John Carpenter's Ghost of Mars. That's not a bad comparison. It takes like ideas from a bunch of other things and he's trying to make his own thing. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't seen it. Like that's kind of like the idea like I got from the movie. I have no idea if I'll like it or not. I mean, I'll check it out on Netflix. I don't have to go anywhere. It's not like I go see movies anyway <laughs> anymore. I don't have time to do anything. <laughs> so the fact that it's on Netflix works out for my benefit. Well, and one last thing, guys, he plays Fortnite. I don't know if you guys knew that. <laughs> but Zack Snyder is on Fortnite. So if you, you sneak into a room and happen to play with him, 
that's a cool thing. But good luck. I, I played a Halo with Evan Stone once. It was great. That's cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it's always cool when that happens. You're playing the game and someone famous is in the game in the room. I know that happens a lot. With my nephew says that he's played uh, 2K um, once with Ke- he thinks he thinks it was Kevin Durant. He thinks the guy was kind of being kind of he was keep being kind of sly about it, but he says he thinks it was Kevin. It sounded like him. Really? So, yeah, that's great. So that's stuff funny. like that. So that is cool. Like that stuff is cool. But uh, Trey yeah. Jackson is convinced he's played me. He's played. We played against each other in Halo. And <laughs> I, I think it's. I, I think it's probably true. <laughs> he used to play a lot back in the day, so he's convinced though. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> so the other another hot button topic when it comes to DC is of course um, David Zaslav, who is the what CEO of Warner uh, Brothers Discovery, the, the greatest executive that has ever lived. David Zaslav, thank you. Yes. So he spoke specifically about um, the decisions he had to make to shelve films, which he said took courage, which I kind of laughed at. I mean, did it really take courage? I don't think so. Well, he knew everyone was coming after him about Batgirl. So, yes, because he saw what happened to Walter Mata and he got nervous. <laughs> so, I. I when I look at the movies he shelved, I, obviously Batgirl was the biggest name because of who was in it. Uh, Michael Keaton was in it. Like you had got people in that film who were known actors. Um, For Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Fraser, yeah, like guys like that. Then he also had to scrap Coyote vs. Acme, which okay, I mean I like you know Roadrunner and <laughs> I think there was a Scooby Doo movie canceled too. Yeah, there was a Scooby Doo, which I believe that was direct to streaming as well. Yeah, all these were direct to streaming, so. Um, but I mean, you have to, sometimes when you're running a business, you have to make these decisions. And I've said that's from the beginning. Um, I don't agree with it, of course, because I'm a, I'm a consumer of film. I want to see them when someone does something, especially something that I'm interested in. But I mean, he basically said, this was his thought process. He said, what content is going to help us win that content? That wasn't, we made a strategic decision on, it was difficult and it was painful, but I think it was the right decision for the company and it was necessary. Um, if you look at the financials, it probably was, uh, dude, I'm just looking at it in real time with the way every comic book movie has been received lately. Yeah. What makes you guys think Batgirl was the dark Knight? It's a good like, question. What, make, what makes you think it was going to shine and be the diamond? Like, honestly, the diamond in the rough, every movie has tanked except guardians, right? Am I off? No, pretty one? much, pretty much this year. Yes, I think that's the only one. And it's not just it hasn't just been comic book movies. I know other the Batgirl directors either. Like, I know they did the Bad Boys movie, but you guys are still like unproven. Yeah. And other IPs, too. Right. The Mission Impossible movie didn't do great. Indiana yeah. Jones didn't do great. Like it hasn't just been it. People aren't going to see these large IP films anymore when they know they could see them in home in six weeks. And so many people have these huge TV screens now. They have huge sound systems. They don't need to go there for the theater. Everyone on Long Island has a theater room. So, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's the highest tax place in the country. Everyone has a but, theater in their house. Oh, uh, well, that, yeah, that would be one way to get money. <laughs> have people come over and watch it, but that's not true for me anyway. I can't speak for anyone else. No, Eric has like was a duplex. But that's, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sure I do. Sure, sure I do. Oh, but that's it, man. Like I don't know. Like, I yeah. Batgirl probably would have been another movie where we would have said we enjoy it, but we understand why other people don't. I'm tired of saying that. I'm glad they scrapped it because they don't have to say that stupid line anymore. I, said I know Black Adam. I said it for Shazam. I said it for Blue Beetle. I said, "What else did I see? I haven't seen Guardians. I don't. I need to see it. It made a billion dollars. <laughs> like it was good. I'm I mean, sure it was it good, was, but it's like it's worth watching. I'm sure I would have enjoyed the Marvels too, and be like, "Hey, I get it. I liked it, but I'm sorry you didn't. Like, I'm tired of saying that stupid sentence. Right? It's true. It's very true. The the fact we don't do this about any other genre either, right? Like, we don't make these kinds of statements, these all-encompassing statements about any other kind of genre. 
it's only the superhero comic book movie genre right now that we make these grandiose comparisons and statements and oh it didn't do a billion or didn't do you know whatever it's only that those films yeah so yeah i agree with you batgirl obviously was not going to be this huge film especially when we've seen what the other ones have done I, but again, just someone who appreciates the the art of film, I would have liked to have seen it, and I think everyone agrees. So, you said, like at one point, like it's, some people were complaining, like Blue Beetle looked cheap. Blue Beetle looked like it was made for. Like I, I remember seeing those comp uh, complaints, and I'm like, I didn't think so. Blue, I know I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I thought it looked fine, but yeah. a lot of people said it looked cheap, and like you know, like it was an upgraded thing. And I'm looking at them like, man, and if that was the movie they picked over Batgirl. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just like, me, Batgirl, I don't know. I've n- I never saw it. It might be the greatest film of all time. Chances are it's not. <laughs> Chances are it's not. You're right. You're right. So. That's it. That's yeah. all I got to say that. You're right. That's, there's no, there's no reason to. Can we start our own it. cult? Can we start the Zazzies? Can, you know, can we be the Zazzies for Zazzla? I, let me put it this way. I'm not a huge fan of his because I've heard things about him from people and he doesn't seem like the coolest guy in the world. Zazzy's for Zazzla. But I understand his role as the head of a, a business who has stockholders to talk to, to explain to, who has to make this financial decisions that best de- best benefit the company as a whole. And I know it sucks as consumers of films when he makes these decisions, but man, the vitriol these people have for him, like he's... <laughs> like he you know killed their dog or something it's crazy to me D- dude you said it like uh, the only way i will ever hate zaslov if he like comes over and spits in my face like this <laughs> man literally has no effect on my life yeah i was like dude all right fine stop making things i won't spend money i don't care <laughs> like thanks for the help yeah, like, bro. <laughs> he- <laughs> this money will go to todd mcfarlane instead like whatever <laughs> he's doing his job that's it. He's doing his job. So it's whatever. That's where I'm at with the Zaslav stuff. I understand. If you're upset about it, that's fine. Be upset. But there, trust me, there are worse things in life. So I can count you in <laughs> Zazzies for Zaslav? <laughs> no, I don't want to say I'll be a Zazzy. Zazzy! <laughs> that's because I don't like how that sounds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So. All right, let's move on. Let's move to Marvel for a second because they're at the end of uh, No Way Home. Many people suspected that was the end of Tom Holland playing Spider-Man. Um, there, he had no contract to continue. Uh, but hold on a second because it sounds like he's involved. We've heard he's in, been involved, but it sounds like it's a very strong possibility he will be back. Um, he said that he would be a fool not to play Spider-Man again, as long as the storyline does justice to the character. As long as the Brink truck backs up. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's part of it. Yes, I'm sure that is part of it. And this is what he said about a potential fourth film. All I can say is that we have been actively engaging in conversations about what it could potentially look like for a fourth rendition of my character. Whether or not we can find a way to do justice to the character is another thing. I feel very protective over Spider-Man. I feel very, very lucky that we were able to work on a franchise that got better with each movie, that got more successful with each movie, which I think is really rare, and I want to protect his legacy. So I won't make another one for the sake of making another one. It will have to be worth the while of the character. I like what he's saying there, because I think he says, yeah, originally it was crap, and we made it better, and now we're going to plow through and uh we've got some ideas at the same time i think it's all pr bullshit and if they offer him a ton of money (laughs) he will make whatever movie they put in front of him that's just that's that's just being honest because i would do the same thing yeah i do i think obviously he has a lot more creative input on this too right like we have that idea that he's involved in whatever they're going to do with the character uh and who knows he might be involved in the development and in the, the story itself but maybe he doesn't play him again maybe they bring in somebody else to do it and he's just a producer on it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I don't know. He did mention that sometimes with the fourth film in a franchise, it could be a little iffy and you don't know how it's going to be received. So he did men- he did say that, but I agree with like, you. What I is think- he comparing it to? Crystal Skull? Like, well, you know, like I don't know. Like how many f- like Scream 4? Like how many, f- how many times do we get to a fourth film, really? Well, even Thor, right? Like Love and Thunder. 
I thought that was actually an improvement, but yeah, okay, <laughs> I get what you're <laughs> You liked it, yes. There are people obviously who like it, but overall it didn't do, it wasn't yeah. received as well as. It didn't make a billion. Well, yeah, <laughs> we go again. It didn't I'm make sorry. a billion. Yeah, that's true. That's the st- that was the standard for them for a while. So I think when he, he, he might even looked at that too. That might have been his in his head when he said that. Fair enough. He just had a fourth film and it didn't, wasn't received that well. So I don't know. Um, I like his portrayal of Spider Man. Uh, I know you have issues with the storyline, and that's fine. I like his portrayal. I think he plays the character well. Uh, so I, I would be the fine. He knocks it out. Yeah, it out the I would be fine if he continues on um, in the role. And I think that was the plan to me originally. It seemed like that's kind of kind of like they were what they were setting up when, in Far From Home. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I do think it's going to be hard to do another Avengers film without Spider-Man being one of the lead characters. I've been saying that the biggest problem with Marvel is they don't have any more heavy hitters. And if they lose Spider-Man, they yeah. are, their lineup is as inept as last year's Yankees. Like, it's not even a joke. <laughs> like they need some guys out there that are going to hit some home runs. They need that they, the X-Men. They need Spider-Man. They need Blade. They need some of these big time IPs to hit. And yeah. that's not a joke. Yep, yep, they definitely need X Men. I agree with you there. They I think they've not been good. surviving on Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel. They have not been. Nope. And they probably regret doing uh, Wakanda Forever the way they did. And you can pull definitely can pull those guys, those characters in. Sure, if you're doing that kind of a film, but you're gonna need Spider Man. He's the he's the one guy I think they need. The one character I think they need for this next level Avenger films, whether it's Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars or whatever ones you're doing. I think they're going to need him. Speaking of Kang Dynasty, <laughs> we do know that Jonathan Major's trial has begun um, for his domestic dispute. And uh, we've talked about this already. Uh, and Marvel's we've heard that Marvel's kind of been having conversations on what they're going to do. However, they have named a writer. Uh, so who knows what the hell's going on? But Michael Waldron, who did Loki is now the screenwriter for Kang Dynasty. So apparently they're going forward with Kang. What Loki did he write? Did he write Loki 1 or Loki 2? I believe... Hold on. Did he do both of them? Yeah. Okay. Just curious. All right. Uh, So he's 50-50 for me. Uh, Yeah, I really dug Loki Season 2. Like, I loved Loki Season 2. I thought it was phenomenal. You know, really well done. Um, that's probably another thing too. Like the MCU should not be done with Loki. <laughs> like if we're talking about heavy hitters, Loki is by far one of the most successful characters they created out of that whole uh, Infinity Saga. But yeah, I, I, I will. I'll take this guy in. He he seems to have an idea of what Kang is doing, and he's kind of been there from the start, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know who who wrote Ant Man. Did he write? He didn't do Wasp. Ant Man and Wasp did he? Because that's it. Then then he's pretty much. If he did that, then he's pretty much written everything Kang has been involved in. That's my only question. Uh, but he's 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 written most of it, so he seems to have the character down and the ins and outs because it can be confusing which version of the character you're talking about. Mm-hmm. He he's the showrunner for Loki, and he wrote actually Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okay, so yeah. okay, and I love Multiverse of Madness. Actually, so do I. So that's I love I it. Too. That's you know, I know I just ripped on Doctor Strange a few seconds ago, but that second movie was phenomenal. Um, yeah. Good news. It's good news. He's a, he's a good writer. He's written more things I like than I don't like. You know, right? And obviously with, with a big thing, you know, big, yeah, big. And thing. in in something like when you have continuity, and since he did Loki, like we said, and Kang was a huge part of Loki in season two, he could do a little juggling. Yeah, he definitely has. You know, he has. He knows where he want the character is right now, so it's going to be easy to move forward for him um, when he writes this. Obviously, this is still a couple years away down the line, so. Who even knows? And who knows what's going to happen with majors? Like I said, the, the trial has begun. Um, you know, I don't know what's going Honestly, on. Honestly, it's closed. Re- the judge recast, closed move it. On. Just recast. Uh, move on. I know. I hear that, but I totally hope they don't have to. I no, really I agree with you. Don't have to. I agree with you. But like this, just just honestly, this just seems like it's Ezra Miller all over again. Yeah, and they didn't recast him. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't know. You're right. It's very possible that could be the way this goes. Uh, and that would be a test, but he's just so talented and so good as Kang. I, yeah, I know. I hope that I really hope it doesn't turn out that way, but they have so, to do what's you know, best. So he'll either be Johnny Depp or Ezra Miller. Like those are the fates. 
Yeah. It seems like right. he'll make the movie and then it, people won't go to see it or he'll get fired from the movie and he'll be declared innocent. Like, I don't know. It just seems like it's just weird. So we talked about Zaslav. Let's talk about Bob Iger for a little while. <laughs> I love talking about guys who make a lot more money than me. <laughs> so he had an interesting comment about why the Marvels uh, didn't do as well as expected and he says because there weren't enough executives on the set <laughs> now i was sitting there thinking well what do you mean by that I, right because he, he's talking about chaperones dude that's what he's talking about keep yeah you in line, keep you in check that's exactly it, it's a school dance and there weren't enough teachers there to pay attention and the kids went crazy <laughs> it's i don't know man like when i when i read the comment i'm like does he mean like having the board sit <laughs> Standing on the set of all these films just to kind of watch and see what's going on. It seems weird. It was a very weird statement to me um, that that's what he thinks. I think he's just talking about people. Hey, this is what's going on. No, we're going to change that. No, we're going to do this. That, that, you know, it kind of it, honestly, it sounds like kind of what, what uh, is that? It's it seems like Zaz- uh, Zazlov Iger doesn't want like any type of like Justice League situation. You know, I agree. I it does that, feel that way. I just, I think he's just using it in his own terms in the Marvels, but he's just, that's it. You know, like, you know, but basically it's the same thing Warner Bros. Did. Like when they weren't pleased with what's going on with Justice League, they sent in Johns and Berg and they, right. you know, they changed things around a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know if that's the way you go to make a movie because then I think you get too many conflicting ideas. You get too many exactly. conflicting ideas. Exactly. I mean, does he just mean that Feige needs to be there on set actually when these things are filming? Probably people reporting to Feige. Right. So, all right. It was just I a very feel... odd comment. Let's just, but I think it hasn't been a good year for studio heads, uh, <laughs> from the for public perspective, um, from the public perception perspective. Why? Because they make so much more money than everybody else, and they're in charge of so many jobs. That's right. Why. And they make decisions that impact these films and these IPs, and they're not always popular. So, but yeah, interesting comment by Mister Iger. Uh, I was just again. I really had no idea what that meant. I was like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. So we did get a trailer for a new uh, movie coming out, and I'm talking about Furiosa, which is the sequel to Mad Max Fury Road or prequel, however you want to look at it. Um, Pete, did you like Mad Max Fury Road? I did. I liked it a lot. I liked it All right. A so lot. what did you think of the Furiosa trailer? Uh, I like it, I, I, a George Miller movie. You go to the theater to be wowed. Like I'm not going to get wowed it by a trailer. I it just for. It, it, but when I go there, I bet I bet it'll be different. The drums will kick in and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. stand everywhere. There'll be like a fleet of seventeen monster cars. Like you know, like it, it, it'll it'll be an experience. Um, which I'm dying to see. And it, no one's more interesting than George Miller. Like what he came up with, Max. And I'm really excited to see more of Moat and Joe. Um, uh, and Rick Kiss. I don't know why, but that always stuck with me. Rick Kiss, the way he says that, it's just amazing. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm sure I'll go there and check it out. But the, uh, I, I, I would not say that that trailer slaps, as the kids would say. <laughs> yeah, I kind of said the same thing. It's like, meh. It, it's you're right. It the, the with him, the whole spectacle is bigger than like just seeing a trailer you need to experience the whole movie in all its entirety to really feel get a reaction from me when i see a george miller film so you're right that's a great that is a great description i wouldn't have said it myself but that is a great description um of his films uh i know a lot of people are because it's anya taylor joy so a lot of people are very much also wanting to see this film they she has a very strong following uh but to me it doesn't even look like her so <laughs> i don't know why that's such a big deal but so much dirt on these girls i'm like i don't even i couldn't reckon i, I remember it was like this is not surely the wrong right <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i'm i'm obviously in wait and see mode i am the thing i'm happy that we got something for it though i am happy that we got a trailer uh so i'm looking forward to i'm definitely looking forward to this movie i really really enjoyed the first one i wonder um, if junkie excels back he did the soundtrack for the last one and everyone loved that soundtrack i thought it was okay but everyone loved it i'm sure he if i'm sure he's back i'm sure they want to keep continuity there so i'm sure he's back because i thought it like worked within really what they worked really well within the context of the movie just like 
I couldn't like I don't know run to the song at the gym if that made sense. <laughs> the album, I mean, that makes sense. Those. But uh, sense. It, was, it works really good within the context of the movie. So I'm excited. Let's, I'll check it out definitely. Yes, Mad Max so. is very interesting to me because it almost seems like I was like, man, if if the world is really twisted, <laughs> it, I feel like it could really happen. <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it's dystopian, right? Who knows? Can you so, imagine Eric Holzman in the Thunderdome? <laughs> I have another question for you. Do you. Have you seen all the Mad Max films? Yeah. Have you? Have yeah. Have? Okay. Yeah. So what's your what's your favorite of the original ones? What's your favorite of those? Oh, it's Thunderdome. Thunderdome? Even yeah. though it's probably the worst one. <laughs> yeah. Thunderdome was a movie that whenever I was sick and I was home, uh, when I would stay at my grandmother's house because I was sick and my mom would go to work. It was like always on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, like before she would pick me up, it would be like on TNT. Right. And I would always watch. It was, I just remember it's always on. It was just two men enter, one man leave, one husband enter, one husband leave, one husband enter, one husband leave. <laughs> you know, like I, just, I, I I love Thunderdome. Tina Turner. That's the, the blaster. Yeah. That, <laughs> well, that's the thing. I was I uh, was actually talking to Rito the other day about this, and um, I told him I said when I was a kid, the draw for that movie to be was that Tina Turner was in it because she was such a big pop star, and that's how I knew her. So I was like, oh, I wanted to see the movie. Movie, um, but yeah, you're right. Of the three, it and is. Then Tupac did a music video that was like a riff off of Mad Max. Yeah, California Love. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yep. California so. Love was that. So, all right, I just wanted to ask because I thought that was a, you know, a pr- appropriate question. Yeah, no, I actually, I have them all on uh, Blu-ray, and uh, they're they're fun. I play the video game too. I like. I actually am a pretty big Mad Max fan. I like. I like the franchise. All right, and I was a little hesitant too. I was like, Tom Hardy's not Mel Gibson. But like uh, Fury Road really uh, won me over. Yeah, he was good. He was good in the movie. Charlie was, was good in the movie. Mean, that's great. Yeah, Nicholas Holt was good in the movie. There's Nicholas Holt again. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He spray painted his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So excellent, excellent. It was excellent. What had like nine Academy Award nominations, something like that. Just a fantastic film. So it was this a fun one, one. This one has a lot to look up to. Yeah, yeah a lot to live great. up to. Yeah. But so George Miller is crazy. Like I remember watching documentaries and like, or not, not documentaries, maybe like interviews of Tom of uh, of Tom Harding, and he's like, "We're just sitting there in the desert," and George is like, "There's gonna be a cloud here," and there's gonna, and he's like, "I don't get it, man. Like, what are you talking about?" And he's like, "And then there it is on the screen." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "I got it. I had to see it, but it's it's interesting. He's just the way Miller works." Right. Well, we're at the end. That's it. This is the end of this the Eric Holzman Chronicles. This is the end. <gasps> Did we get a little uh, singy wingy? Oh, my baby. friend. Look at that. <laughs> Your little Holzman serenade to send you off? <laughs> oh, oh, it's not Kiss from a Rose, but we'll take what we can it's get. Not, right no, it's not Kiss from a Rose. I can't. I told you. I'm the Holzman on the ground. <laughs> it's not in my. I can't sing that song. It's not in my range. It's it's like Eric walks into a room. There's candles lit everywhere, rose pellets, <laughs> and then he plays "A Kiss from the Holzman on the Gray." And then Sally Justenberger's like, ah. <laughs> "I'm ready for you." Jesus Christ! In her nighty. I would hate man spending <laughs> spending one day in your brain must be a an a, <laughs> must be a chore <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> Recently, Reno and I have been exchanging Holzimon songs uh, uh, via text message. It's been really great. So I know he sent me a few of them. He has. He has sent me some of the some of the songs. <laughs> I have been privy to some of them. So uh, your friends think about you, Eric. Just want it's you to funny. Know it's scary that you think about me that much. <laughs> to be honest. But. I guess it's better to be thought about than not to be thought of at all. Uh, there you go. I I, can, so. I might be able to fill a whole album with my Eric's. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Text, uh, our text, Peter and Reno, the Eric Holzman duet. <laughs> <laughs> Sold a whopping two copies. <laughs> Those whopping doo-whoppers. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, all right, Pete, good. tell them where they can find you. Uh, you can follow me on social media uh, everywhere at Pete Illustrated. Uh, follow this podcast, podcast you're listening to right now on Instagram and Twitter at straight underscore O underscore G. Uh, check out our Facebook group and our Facebook fan page, Straight Out of Gotham, both there. 
Uh, check out the Italian Spider-Man Coalition, my other podcast, Out of Times for Spidey on Twitter. Uh, BatmanFilm.com, Batman Film YouTube, Batman Film Podcast feed. Check all that stuff out. I'm everywhere. And uh, yeah, it's, it's up to you, champ. Hold yeah, so cool. on Twitter slash X slash whatever it's called this week, it's at finally33, spell finale33, of course. Same on Instagram. You can check me out over there. Just catch my food pictures. That's all I post on Instagram. It's foot <laughs> pictures. You said foot pictures. Food, 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 not foot. Jesus. You're obsessed with my feet too, which scares me. Anyway. <laughs> You're the one who sends pictures of me. <laughs> if you guys are interested in the New York Knicks, I do a weekly show on YouTube called All Nicked Up every Wednesday night. Either like at... in Vegas? Huh? No, like I hope so. Like That'd be Vegas? fun. That'd be a... I would like that matchup. That'd be a fun matchup. No defense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA, yes, Pete's referring to the NBA Cup, which I've been more interested in than I could. I thought I would be. I'll say that. So only because we'll your team's involved. Otherwise, you wouldn't care. <laughs> of course. Why would I also? Would I care? I wouldn't care if the Knicks weren't involved. I don't care about the regular right NBA here. finals when the Knicks aren't involved. Uh, I always care who wins. So that yeah, I care who wins, but I don't like. I don't give a damn. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Yes, all nicked up every, like I said, on YouTube and on Facebook and through our Facebook page every Wednesday night, either 8, 8.30. It's been 8 or 8.30 recently. Uh, if there's a game, it's immediately when the game ends and we discuss the New York Knicks and, and either that we recap the game or we discuss everything that's going on around the, with the Knicks and also in the NBA, um, the major stories, obviously. Uh, so you guys can check out, check that out as well. As Pete mentioned, as we talk about all the time, hit us up in the Facebook group, guys. Uh, we love having, we love talking to you guys, interacting about any of the stories, which Pete puts all the stories we discuss there, or when I post the actual <coughs> podcast, you mm-hmm. can comment on that as well. Leia, Leia wants to say hi. She said hi a few times during the show already, so she's saying, <laughs> she's saying hi again. Eric is uh, neglecting his dog. <laughs> yep, my fault. Uh, Horrible she's owner. <laughs> so she'll be fine. She's okay. Hopefully she doesn't do anything in the house, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's it. Unless you have anything else, Pete. Ooxus. We didn't get to that point yet. No. Oh. <laughs> so for Pete, I'm Eric. You're listening straight out of Gotham. We'll see you next time. Booyah.